Let's carry on now with creating the textures for this uh, device from the Kursk submarine. And in order to do that, we're going to need to create some graphics, as you can see uh, in the image here. All right, so we're going to start with these bars. And to do that, we're going to go into whatever graphics program you like to use. I'm going to use Flash. And I'm going to create a new Flash document. You could do this in GIMP or Photoshop or some whatever whatever you really want but I'm going to make it 1024 by 1024 to match the size of the UVs and then I'm going to import to the stage the UV layout that we created in Blender and we exported so there it is and I'm going to bring it in and it's going to match and it's going to line up right in the middle okay now I'm going to start zooming in on this and creating the UVs based on this. And this is why I did that Boolean so that I could get, uh, so I could get this in this image right here. All right, so there's the UVs right there. And we can create a new layer and I'm gonna work right here. I wanna create those bars. So the way I'm gonna do that is, and I'm not gonna show you every step of the way. I'm just going to do something here and then you can do your own thing however you like. So. I'm going to make a rounded rectangle. Let's see what it starts to look like. Say something like that. Okay, now I've already got something made, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do this anyhow. And we're going to create five of these and then a shorter one and a shorter one on either side in the middle of the bolts. Okay, so uh, I actually think that that's not quite long enough, so I'm going to do another one. They come up about the middle to about the middle let's let's go with that all right so I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it and paste it that's five spaces One. One, two, three, four, five. and I'll take both of those edit copy edit paste in place one two three four five one two three four five okay so those are even and I'm gonna take another one now and I'm gonna go edit copy edit paste in place one two three four five and I'm at 200 I just want to remember to go back to 200 I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the top and I'm gonna go one two three down maybe so I'll grab a little bit of the bottom and I'll come one that way one two three as well so that's even and then what I'll do is I'll take that I'll go back to 200 the, the zoom level it matters in in flash for how much you move across so I'll go one two three four five 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 okay I'll take this one edit copy edit paste in place one two three four five and i'll make a smaller one out of that one just go one two three four we'll do something like that grab a bit one two three four okay so that's that and then take that one edit copy edit paste in place one, two, three, four, five. okay now i'm going to zoom out and have a look at this and see all right well that's what I'm getting all right for me I'm gonna convert that to a symbol that's just a way of grouping it all together so I can take this and I can move it it doesn't really matter at that point in fact I'm gonna take it and I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna create a new document here and uh, I'm gonna make this 1024 now that's important for substance painter that your your decals or your alphas or whatever are 1024 by 1024 or square at the very least they don't have to be 1024 but square but I'm gonna do it like that and I'm gonna change that to block and then I'm gonna paste that in so there it is but I'm gonna come in and actually have to turn it to white all right because we need our alphas to be white so I'm gonna take that and I can center it like that but I'm gonna make it bigger so I'm going to scale it up evenly till it's big like this. There we go. So those are our bars now that we're going to use. All right. So I would at this point go and export image. And I've already got one here. Just save it as bars PNG. Okay. Now 
let's come back to substance painter and I think what I'll do is I'm going to take all of this stuff here I'm going to put that into a folder actually and I'm going to call this I'm going to call it texture even if there's a couple of other things in there and I'll do uh, some other stuff in another folder in a bit so I'm going to create a paint layer first of all just a regular paint layer and I'm going to choose color and height and the color is going to be almost black and the height let's bring down almost three quarters or so let's snap this to orthographic so we're looking right in the front there and we're going to place those bars there so we're going to import those bars click there add resource and then navigate to where you've saved that image So bars, PNG, open, set it as an alpha, and set it to the current project and import. And there it is. Double click, and there are your bars. Hold down control and right mouse button and pull. And, you know, it may not be exactly the same as the diagram, all right, but we're going to go with this. And then click. And there are the bars. Okay, so we've put that down. Let's call this bars, for lack of a better name. Now that was a paint layer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a black mask. And then I'm going to add a fill. And they're there just faintly. I'm going to go to the properties. And I'm going to look at this grayscale. And come to the procedurals. And I'm going to type, type hex. And this one with the white background here, hex dots. I'm going to drag that in. And it's going to look like that. I'm going to take the tile and bring it all the way up. And now you're starting to see the effect that I'm going for. And I'm going to bring the scale here up to maybe three, maybe even two. So now it looks like that old fashioned radio where you can see into that. All right, so that's looking good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make a folder and let's call this uh, decals or something like that. Decals and text and all that. All right, so we got that so far. And we can get rid of that alpha if we want. Now we'll do that in a bit. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to change some stuff on these buttons. I'm going to come back down to the textures to where I have this black buttons, this black stuff. On Click on the mask and click on the polygon fill. And this is how we determine that these would be black. And I actually want to make the, the buttons the same way. I'm going to click on the mesh fill. And I'm going to make them all black, but we're going to change the top. So let's look at that. So now the sides are black and the top is. We're going to change that. Because if I have a close, close look at this, it almost looks like the sides are black. And then just the tops. And that, that kind of looks nicer to me anyhow. I think what I'll do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to change this color to something else that I like. So maybe I'll, I might even color select something like that. And let's go to just, let's go to uv chunk and try that and see how it works i click there i get those two rows i mean i get the surface and i get this row and this now if i click any further i'll start getting more just based on the way i've set this up so i'm just going to click there and now i have that button color back on the buttons but it's black in behind I want to make this button here, this center one, a slightly different color. See, this one's sort of green. So I've got this sort of base body color back on the buttons, and this one is, is green. So let's do that again. Let's, um, you can do what you want. You can call this uh, button surface color. And what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate this again. Uh, where is it? Duplicate. I'm going to clear the mask 
I'll change this color to more of a green. I don't know. Let's start with that and see how it goes. On the mask, I'm going to click that, not there. Let's choose, uh, yeah, no, that should be okay. There we go. Just that part. And then we can change that color if we don't like that green. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, it's kind of close. You can do whatever you want, but I'll stick with that for now because I think you get my drift. Okay, we're gonna come back to the buttons in a moment. What we're gonna do next though, is we're going to add some indents to these buttons. Um, I may still do it in the texture area here, maybe right above dirt. I'm gonna click the paint layer and I want color and height. And I'll, I won't go so far, let's try that. And it's debatable if we definitely want color, but I think I may do that. I'm going to come to the alphas and choose circle and I'm going to choose this one here this one this shape border one and I'm going to change the border width all the way up so it's just a black circle and let's give this a try now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try it over the bolts and see click okay now what I can do is I can use the eraser and erase it off of the bolt itself. And I now have an indent. All right, and come back to the brush itself. So let's go ahead and work on some of this. I probably could have just used a mirror. Let's do these so that they look like holes and then we'll come back and we'll erase a bunch. I'm gonna make this one bigger. I mean, this is an optional part. All right, I'm gonna start with that and take the eraser and I can use a different alpha if I want or I can keep that one see the way the rust starts coming through and you can leave some of the black on there it looks kind of okay now let me just rotate the light a little bit and see if you get a sense of that indent uh, you can see it there okay so depending on where the lights at uh, you can see it so I'm just erasing away that part of the mask And I'm gonna do this a little bit quick so that we're not here all day. So I may make some mistakes. You can take all the time you need. So now we have our bolts somewhat indented. Now I'm not done though because I think I would like to do that for uh, my buttons and knobs as well. Maybe not these buttons but these knobs. So I'm going to come back to the brush. I'm going to increase the size. Now I'm going to do this and I'm going to see where is my... Let's get that going again. Let's see if I can do it here. All right. Notice we're having some trouble here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the UVs as well. And on the UVs, you can see the indents I've done. I'm going to come here, okay, and watch this. I'll do this one so that you can watch on this side here. I'm going to zoom in on my UV. And you see that? Now you can see it there, but we see some weird patterns. So I'm going to undo. Do that there and just look at, at it and say, you know, is that how big I want that? I want it a little bit smaller. Uh, I'll go with that. 
we'll come back to those buttons so I'll zoom around like that we'll come back to these and do some erasing in a moment just putting this down so we have just a little hint of a hole like that okay let's go back to just the 3d view not too easy to see but it, there's something there now this one i don't think i need to do anything but this one's got this extra little bit on it oh, it looks kind of cool come to the eraser and just erase that out okay and i got a hole underneath there same with this one i'm gonna have to go all the way over it so let me do that here and it looks like I'm painting like in Z brush or something. Or Z brush as you American people call it. Alright. And I don't know that I have to do anything here. I guess I could. And I may by accident erase some of the hole itself. But we'll do it alright. It should be alright. All right, a little bit of an indentation in there. You decide if that's deep enough or you want to change the height. Okay. So we've added that. There you can see it there. Cool. All right, so now we need to eventually get some text on here and we're gonna do that soon. Let's just call this buttonholes. Save. Let's come up to maybe here, maybe still under the dirt, and I'm going to create another paint layer. And I will use uh, on the brush color, uh, maybe just color. Let's try just color and make this a, um, a yellowish white, almost paperish kind of. Let's try that. We can change the opacity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a square alpha. So um, square. I happen to have this one shaped square. If you don't, you could just use something like that. And I'm going to uh, control and right mouse button to size it up. And I'm going to click on here as if it's a piece of paper. All right. And so maybe I will change the color uh, a little bit more like that. And I'll put some, we're gonna put some text over this. But as you can see in the image here, uh, let me just click on that. There's this whitish area, almost like there was old tape that's worn out. Uh, and so I'm just gonna do this. And because my UVs are not great, uh, the way I did it with Smart UV Project, uh, things don't always line up beautifully, but it's good enough in this case, I think. So I'm gonna do this. That's going to be fine. And then for this one, I think I will probably have to, let's see, I, um, scale that down and maybe click here and hold shift and control and slide it over. And so I do it like that. All right. And then from there, you can call this like um, button shine. You know, it used to be in Photoshop, we would do, um, oh, I don't remember, like a gradient on top, whatever, to make those glossy buttons for web pages. And often we call it a shine or something like that. I'm just to take the opacity down and just decide how much you want of that showing through. Okay, so there it is. We are getting ourselves ready for some text, the final stages of this. But just before we do that, still in, the, in here, let's do one more fill layer. Let's add a black mask on the fill layer. Let's go with color and height. We'll leave the color as white for now. Drop the height just a little bit. And on the black mask, right click and add a fill so that we can get this grayscale. And let's go to procedurals and type in scratches and drag this very last one here, grunge scratches rough, and drop it on there. And you can see some scratches appearing. Now you decide if you like white, if you like no color, if you prefer black, um, whatever you like. Uh, I'll show you what happens if I take off of off the color. If you get the light right, uh, you can see them. It's a little hard, and so what I often like to do is make them white or make them black. 
and have them look I mean you know like it's like scratches that got dirty you know some of this dirt and grunge got got in the scratches so you just decide um, how how much you want how long you want and just to have them there and they may show up on your buttons and you can erase them from there if you if you want but I kind of like it uh, because this is all one big unit you know and if it got scratched like some guys walking by with a wrench or something uh, it's not just gonna scratch the surface and scratch anything it hits so uh, up to you but anyways we, we have some scratches in there so um, I'll call this scratches all right good Let's close up textures for now make sure we're saving by the way notice that over here in the general properties of the texture set settings I'm at 1024 I will eventually up res that to 2k and it will look even nicer okay and we're also in orthographic by the way if it's starting to look funny so there it is back in its sort of perspective view and I'll hit tab and you can see how she's looking all right and with those indents around the buttons again it looks like dirt has accumulated in there okay so let's go back and we're going to add some text now to this and so yeah text Russian uh, okay well not being Russian myself uh, what I did is I downloaded a Russian like font and uh, just put some letters together I, I, I didn't know what I was typing I hopefully I didn't type any swear words or anything but I just typed some letters and I did it all in one image. Yeah, I did spend some time looking at the diagram going, can I make these out? I don't know, like BNM or something. No, nah, you know what? I'm just going to do something. That's where I came up with this one, actually. So uh, the actual font that I downloaded it was a free font. It was called Kirilla. And uh, I just installed that in Windows and then opened up Flash and I typed some text. You'll note that I've got a black background. It's 1024 by 1024 with white text. So, so I'm going to use this as an alpha. You want your alpha itself to be white and your background to be black at a size of 1024 by 1024. And then bring that in to Substance Painter. So let's do that now. Let's import that. But let's create um, a layer. I'm just going to use a paint layer again and I'm going to use just color. You know, sometimes it's nice to use a little bit of height. So let's try that. Let's make this, uh, what am I doing? It's going to be black in color for the font. And let's make the height just, just down a little bit. We can do this and then try again. You can't you know, change your settings with a paint layer um, frequently and just go back. But, you know, you can undo at least. All right, let's import that image. So I've got it here as Kursk, uh, Russian font. There it is. All right, so you, you can't really see it very well. That's because it's white on black. It's a PNG. Open it, define it as an alpha, set it to the current project, and it will come in and already be selected. So there it is. You have to double click it, and now it's active. Control and right mouse button to zoom. Now you'll know to have all of them on one, and uh, that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down till I get the size I like. And I'm going to click and I'll get the other ones as well. All right. And I'm just going to have to redo it and I'll just erase the other ones. Otherwise, you could do it separately. It's up to you. So I'm going to do that. So it's indented. I don't think I'm going to like that. I think I'm just going to all click on color and just keep color. And yeah. So let's do this. Let's go click there and then take the eraser and then just erase the other ones. And hopefully I don't miss any little bits and then, you know, like that. And back on the brush. And then I'm going to come in. Now, it's probably better to do an orthographic. And you get, you got to be on the screen. I'll zoom it down a little bit. I'm going to do this this one. RP, whatever. You got that one. Okay, I'll take the eraser. And I'll do that. So it's just this one way of working, you know, whether it's the best way or... It'll, it'll get the job done. Okay, over to this guy here. Make it a bit smaller. Let's try it right about there. Erase the, the rest. I mean, I'm not even looking at the reference image. I'm just doing anything. All right, back to the brush. And we're going to go for this 
last one. Now that's going to be a little difficult because if I click, then I'm going to be erasing my original. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's see. I think for the last button, this is this is a button text. I think for the last one, I'm going to create another paint layer. It should remember the settings, so I don't have to worry about that. And uh, I can even get rid of that. And now I can come up and I can do this. And I can erase without fear of erasing anything above. And then I'll just unhide that other text. Come on, get out of there. Uh, good enough. It's so dirty in there that it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think I see a little bit down here, though. Could be wrong. What layer, layer is that on? Yeah, I did. So you can always go back and decide. Okay. And I've got some text on there. Okay, for better or for worse, we got some text. And uh, in a similar manner, I created um, some other text. Let's have a look. Well, I'm going to bring it in anyhow. And this layer has probably what I want. Nah, you know what? I'm going to do button text again. And then I'm going to create another paint layer. And I think I will this time have some height. So I'll go to that little depth. We'll try that. I'm going to import some more text kursk transmitter i just did that it's actually in english set it as an alpha to the current project grab it and make it bigger and then i can come over here and make it say 120. i just want to have something else you know i'll i'll, I'll, I'll stamp it in and then i'll show you what to, what we've got okay so it's the, it's using that font and it does the r's backwards like that but i'm saying kirk transmitter you know what this is it's probably an intercom isn't it it's an intercom in the various cabins but i don't know it's a device so i just thought i'd throw that in there and it's got a little bit of indentation um let's label that as uh i'll actually call that kursk uh transmitter and let's not forget that we can come to all of these text layers and grab the eraser and maybe brush and switch it to dirt brush and maybe take dirt one and you can lower the opacity and you can come around here and you can just dab it to you know to, so that the text isn't perfect so that it's rubbed out a little bit so i can do that there uh, i think i tried to do it on the bottom one but it's on another layer so we could you know that kind of thing and let's do that on cursed transmitter just a little bit and let's see how well we can actually chop out a bit like for example if i was to come to this hard brush you see we, we can really get rid of uh, letters and stuff like that let's just leave it like that you can do whatever you like in your artistic view so we're getting some of that and then it's just a question of of doing other graphics that you feel are uh relevant to the diagram or what you see here there are these curves here all right and i i did something like that and i can show you that and then there's other text uh under these buttons and so um you know uh, let's let's see what what else we can come up with here so we got that and let's go for another one the same way but no height just color I'll click on color to uh, have just that. So let's come into here. Let's grab this curve and, and try it. Define it as an alpha to the curve project. Import, double click, and you've got it. Scale it down. Let's go back into orthographic. It's a little bit more exact for putting these things on. And um, let's see how this thing goes. It's kind of right over the top and so yeah you know and it can end up looking like an eyebrow there's like one there and there's like one there it's kind of like that and then there's some text below but one thing that we still need to get is the button borders so i'm going to come back here to let's see where i've got there's the uvs i don't need that anymore what I need is to come down here and these are my main buttons and I need to create that stroke border or, or whatever we want to call it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm on an empty layer. I'm going to choose my rectangle tool and just my stroke 
I'm going to use a really, you know what? I should just use a white color because it's got to be white in the end. I'm going to set my size to about three and I do need some curvature, but not too much. Let's try just eight, a rounded rectangle and just sort of draw around this. Yeah, I like that. And it doesn't matter too much how centered it is because I mean, I'm going to be centering it in Substance Painter. So I'm going to need that. So I think I'll take that and copy it. Come to this one, get rid of that. I just need a 1024 by 1024 black background. Paste that in, center it. And I think, I, let's see how, how thick that looks. Mm, I think I need it thicker. All right, so basically I'm just creating a rounded rectangle like that, and I would export that as a PNG. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to show you. We are going to come back to here, and what have I got? I've got the curves. All right, I'm going to call these curves. Save. I'm going to create a new paint layer. Same thing, just with color, not with height. And I'm going to import button border one, I called it. Button border one PNG. Define it as an alpha to the current project. And there it is. And now I'm going to come in here and stamp it down. And I see nothing. All right, if that happens, come over to your to your UVs because these are were, were sort of holes and do it here. And then just watch the side there, see? And then I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to do another one. And that one didn't quite work where I wanted it. All right. It's getting a little funny. And so what I'll do, I'll do that. And if that happens, let me try come back here and see I do have the border let's try the eraser with um, just a brush really you know a hard brush come in here and erase that out and say what the hell are you doing here again if you if you've got sort of funny UVs you can get some funny effects I don't know how funny it actually is but you can always fix it up and no one will know what happened. All right, so I've got those borders. Oh, I seem to have it on almost all of these. So I'll take a moment and just clean this up a little bit at least. I want my border and I don't want that. And again, if you do a nice job in UV unwrapping all your buttons and stuff, you won't have to deal with some of this. But, uh, you know, if I do it the quick way and if it works and, you know, then cool. Okay, and you would also do the same thing to make a uh, more rectangular one for here, and I believe I've got that, and so I'm going to import that as well. Drop it down there, and I'll close that up, look at 3D, and see how that looks, and that looks just fine to me. Oh, maybe it'd be nice to have something under those dials, some text. So how about we do something here? I'll just uh, I'll just come into one of these and we're gonna write something in in English like um, and we'll just see. So I'm gonna export those now as a PNG and I'll call this Russian font 2. And we'll just try to wrap this up. Okay, so this is this is button button borders, let's say. I don't know that that should be in decal. Yeah, it should be in decal. Sure, it should. Okay, uh, new layer with color only. Yeah. Okay, we're on layer. Yeah. Okay, bring in that Russian font two. There it is. Okay, what are we gonna do? Uh, how about we go up here, speak. Let's go speak and uh, here, 
press doesn't really make sense but okay and then I'm gonna come in with the eraser and uh, I better choose like a square or something there we go okay so I'm now going to erase this stuff here all these this font stuff we don't want I know that that's, that doesn't make sense but uh, no that's not what I wanted I wanted the press part all right good enough and then we'll come in here again and we'll just do something like uh, uh, turn up and power okay all right that one on um, you know do you know doesn't make sense but that's what we're getting that is what we're getting all right let's make sure we are in perspective because it'll look a little look a little nicer play around with the light and let's not forget to up res this to 2k and save and we're done I think we're done unless I'm missing something but that's a lot of techniques right there all right and that's probably what I'm going to stick with for mine so we've done the bars with that little pattern we've done the indents for the bolts we've messed around with the the buttons themselves and uh, yeah I mean if this was just a prop it'd probably be overkill anyhow for it but uh, and then my Russian is terrible so I'll work on that all right so that's going to be it for device one we're going to move on and do device two maybe we'll have a name for it maybe we won't uh, if you are modeling uh, and texturing something like this, good luck. Uh, hope you get nice results. Thanks a lot for tuning in and hope to see you next time.